board met tonight in executive session. We're now ready to continue with the public portion of our meeting. Uh, presidents, I know you're all here because you have an urgent need to hear about the budget. So, presidents, I'll work be short. Um, you note on your agendas that John DeVue will be retiring. And when I was thinking about that, I wrote one word on my agenda next to John DeVue's name, and that word is indispensable. No one is really indispensable, but he is the closest thing to indispensable we have in this district. He has kept us together with um, a wish and a prayer and a big toolbox and a truck with which he drives all around. There, when something goes wrong, John Dubuque is always there. When a pipe breaks in the middle of the night, John Dubuque is there. When, when something falls off one of our buildings, John Dubuque is there. And he does it with such good humor and creativity. Uh, he's just the closest thing we have to the indispensable man. So it's wonderful that he is looking forward to a happy retirement. It's terrible that there aren't two of him. Um, but we wish him very well, and I will miss him so much. And that's the president's report. Uh, just going on, John, I've known John for um, 24 years now, and he's been with the district for 38 years. Uh, he's also one of the probably two staff members we have that's, uh, have, that worked at Central mm -hmm. uh, School, so it's, it's always interesting to have that connection. Um, as Betsy said, he, he's indispensable. Um, he does so much work in-house that we, uh, most districts would have to send, um, get an outside vendor to do. Um, he just has a history of the buildings. We'll be walking around and looking like, yeah, I fixed that in 92 and this is what I did. 1992, I can't remember last week, John. I don't understand how you have that. Um, just his insight and um, his knowledge of, of the district and the buildings are, are just, you can't replace that. Um, I was fortunate to coach both of his sons. Um, as I said, I've worked with him for 24 years, and I, I consider him a friend. So it, this will be, you know, the first person I see every morning when I come to the board office is John Dubuque. He's, he's sitting there waiting for me, having a cup of coffee, and uh, we, we discuss uh, facility issues before uh, my day gets started. So it's going to be a change for me, but I, I want to wish him the best, and uh, I know he's going to enjoy the time with his grandchildren. Uh, just want to talk about a couple items I said we'd get back to the public on from the last board meeting. Um, we did have a, um, some outside evaluations that are conducted as part of a um, special education evaluations um, as part of that classification process. Uh, someone asked me how many we had. Uh, last school year we had 25 um, of those outside eva evaluations completed. This year we've had 14 of the outside evaluations completed. Um, there's another question about um, outdated checks that we were removing from our books, and we've canceled those checks out and we've reissued them, so we'll, we'll follow up on those probably uh, in the next couple of months to see if they're being cashed or not. Um, and the last question we had was a question of uh, one of the categories on the new uh, student data, um, state student safety data form was about removal from school. I want to read the de definition of that. Um, incidents leading to removal that is defined as any incident that does not meet the school safety data um, form incident type definitions for violence, vandalism, harassment, intimidation, or bullying, bullying HIV, weapons offenses, substance of offenses, that results in a disciplinary removal for at least one half day must be reported. Disciplinary removals are defined as any instance in which a child is removed from his or her educational placement for disciplinary purposes, including in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension, expulsions, removal to, other, uh, to another educational setting. Um, for the first time period of this year from September to the end of December, we had four, four of those incidents at the high school and one of those incidences at Ridgewood After School. Um, to give you an update on, this is a time of year where a lot of things are happening, so the next couple board meetings, I'm just gonna give you uh, an idea of some of the things that are happening. Today we started um, part of, excuse me, 
New Jersey State Learning Assessment Testing at Ridgewood Avenue School. So they're in the state testing process. Um, later this week, the French Honor Society will occur. International Festival at Linden. Intergenerational Day will be Friday at Linden. Uh, Friday is the Forest Spring Carnival. And Friday night is the Glen Ridge Hall of Fame induction. Next week, um, advanced placement exams start. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, for, um, we have the Ridgewood Avenue School Play. Starts on Friday and on Saturday. The uh, although it's not, well, I guess it is a little bit of our function now. The Art yes. and Echo <laughs> Festival, uh, which is now falling under the Glen Ridge High School Home and School. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> is occurring. Uh, the following week, we do have um, a board meeting. Um, the buddy breakfasts for the incoming third graders happen at Ridgewood Avenue School, and we also have. The, um, the parent orientation for the incoming third graders. So a, a lot starting and it will continue and continue and continue until the end of the school year. It's always an exciting time of year for us. Um, we've had five high school students named to the Essex County Honor Band, which is a high, all-time high for Glen Ridge. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to announce that. And they are um, um, Darush. Danavi, Rita Delu, Garrison Huddleston, Sam Landis, and Daniel Nathanson. So congratulations to those five high school students. Construction update, uh, Richwood Avenue, over the April break, we had our, our abatement project done. It was supposed to last about five days, and it ended up lasting about two and a half days, which was great, so we had a plenty of time to get in and clean up any mess that occurred. Um, air quality test came back. Uh, that we didn't have any issues. Uh, so uh, it, give, it gives us a head start in the summer project. Over the weekend, the boiler was removed from Ridgewood Avenue School. And if you ever, by any chance, uh, saw the boiler room, it was very complex with a lot of uh, machinery in there. And it is now empty. So it's quite a sight to see. Um, and they're, in the evenings, they are working on the unit ventilators, where they're going in, disconnecting the electric, and um, they're disconnecting some um, condensing piping. So uh, when school is let out, they're going to just have a jump start and pull the unit vendors out um, so they can replace them. So they're, they're moving very quickly at Ridgewood Avenue, and we're very pleased with that. Uh, Central School, uh, we took the Finance and Facility Committee on a little tour last week. It, it's starting to look like a school inside. The framing's done. They're starting to put some sheetrock in. Uh, We've been meeting with a lot of vendors for door hardware, playground, furniture, security, um, a lot of little things that uh, when we were going through the tour, I, I turned to Barbara, I'm like, oh, window treatments, we gotta put that on the, <laughs> on the list of things we gotta get. So um, uh, we're making the plans and, we're, and we're, they're on schedule, so hopefully it stays that way and, and we're very excited about that. And Forest and uh, Linden Avenue HVAC project had a, a kickoff meeting over the break and we're waiting for them to submit their work schedule, so they should be uh, going in after school hours to start doing some work, um, removing the boilers and, and the, uh, those buildings also before school's out. Um, and lastly, um, Barbara's going to present um, the 2019 and 2020. <coughs>
The preliminary budget was approved by the board in March and was submitted to the county for approval. The finance committee continued to meet on the budget and make recommendations up through the public hearing date. Tonight, there's a motion on the agenda to vote to adopt the 1920 budget. Our revenues. The budget's comprised of revenues and expenditures. On the revenue side, this budget has a significant decrease in budgeted fund balance of $414,000. Uh, $422. The budgeted fund balance is the funds that are left over as unspent in the prior year's audit. As we roll these funds, we roll them into the next year's budget. If we don't have as much left over as the prior year's budget received, it creates a gap in our revenue side of the budget that must be made up. We have a capital reserve withdrawal of $340,000 to support security upgrades and a local tax levy increase of 2.5%. Our total general fund budget is increasing by 2.4%. Tax levy revenues make up 88.5% of our budget. Our budgeted fund balance makes up 4.5% and state aid makes up 3.6%. We receive some tuition which makes up 1.8% of our revenues and as you can see the local tax levy supports the majority. Revenue history. When we look at our history of state aid, we see that in 10 11, the state took away all of our state aid, which was 1.2 million. We have been gradually getting a little more state aid each year. This year, we welcome another increase in state aid, $125,000 more than the total received in 1890. At $1,230,738 in state aid for 1920, we are back to the level of gain we were getting before it was reduced in 2010 11. However, our expenditures have increased significantly since then. Our increase in tax levy in 10-11 when our state aid was cut was 3.26. Our tax levy increases since 15-16 have been stable and between 2% and 2.5% each year. We're proposing a 2.5% tax levy increase for 1920, utilizing $148,252 of banked cap to go above the 2% tax cap. This bank cap was created last year when we had large increases in our health benefit costs. Essentially, bank cap is permission to go above the 2% tax cap without going to vote. The state allows us to increase the tax rate by more than 2% if we have significant increases in health benefits or enrollment. We will be using this bank cap for security upgrades. General fund expenditures. Our expenses are made up of $15,409,000 in instructional expenses, support services of $18,257,000, and capital expenditures of $669,000. Our total gen general fund budget of $34,335,831. Our proposed general fund total increase over the 18-19 original budget is 2.4%. Appropriations for the general fund. Salaries and benefits make up 75.7% of our budget. The salaries are spread throughout the pie. And they're included as part of most of those categories. Regular ed instruction makes up 35% of our budget. Special ed education instruction in district is 6%. Transportation, 3%. Tuition payable, 7%. Support services make up 10%. Administration, 10%. Maintenance and operations, 8%. Co-curriculars and athletics, 2%. Employee benefits, 15%. And capital outlay, 2%. Expenses. Our largest groups of expenditures are shown here. Regular program instruction is about $12 million. Special ed instruction in district is $2.1 million. This includes our pre-K disabled, autistic, learning and language disabled, and resource center programs. Maintenance and operations of our facilities at 2.6 million. Support services such as nursing, guidance, <coughs> study team, and media center are 3.2 million. School administration, which includes the superintendent's office, the central office, principal offices, and directors of technology and student services are about 3.5 million. Athletic and co-curriculars are a little under a million. Tuition payable for our out-of-district 
tuition to students is 2.4 million and employee benefits are 5.2 million. That's a 1920 new programs and additions. The budget includes funding for eight new out of district placements since our last budget was struck for a total of $1,036,000. A custodian and utilities for Central School, 12 Promethean panels, which are interactive smart boards to replace aging smart boards, and security upgrades, including but not limited to additional cameras and camera upgrades a lockdown system with strobes, cell phone network extensions, and 3M security bill. These are all recommendations by our security consultant firm, Stonegate. 2019-20 items removed from the budget. Items removed from the budget are a bookkeeping position with the savings of $65,905 two elementary teaching positions for a total of $173,396. Uh, that will be a first grade teacher. There's currently four sections of first grade at Forest with 17 to 18 students per class. They will move up to second grade with three sections of 23. The current kindergarten has three sections of 20. When they move up to first grade, this will be unchanged. Fifth grade teacher. The current fifth grade has seven sections of 22. When they move up to sixth grade, they will have six sections of 26, but many will leave to go into resource classrooms. The current fourth grade has six sections of 22 to 23. When they move up to fifth grade, this will be unchanged. The Spanish teaching position is going from full-time to part-time for a savings of $22,210. Part-time gym teacher position with a savings of $40,000. Four paraprofessional positions, one at each school. Six period stipends in the amount of $55,611. HVAC, HVAC maintenance costs of $48,000. Copier leases of $58,000. And a purchasing consultant of $30,000. Budgetary cost per pupil. When we compare our per pupil costs to other schools in the area, we see that historically we are in an efficient district. Our per pupil costs for the 1819 budget are $15,908, which is significantly less than most districts on the list. We compare our district to Mountain Lakes, we're spending over $5,000 less per student, and still see evidence of great success in our students. Comparative district budget increases for 1920. We compare our tax rate our tax increase of 2.5% to other similar districts in our area, we are below most of the districts on this list. The other districts range from 2% to as high as 3.9%. The only district that is lower than Glenridge is Montclair. Cost to the taxpayer. The tax impact of the general tax levy on the average house is assessed at $547,957 projected to increase by $261 for the year, or $21.74 per month. Since the town was recently re reassessed, most, most houses were given new assessed values. In general, about a third were lower, about a third increased, and about a third remained the <coughs> same. In order to compare the year-over-year -year school tax impact on the average house, we used last year's rateable so that we could come up with an amount of change that was attributed to the school tax increase only. This does not include any tax impact that the reassessment may have on a house. Community support. We are grateful for the incredible support our district gets from our community. It would be difficult to operate our district successfully without the community support we get. These groups and other groups support our arts programs, athletic and co-curricular programs, professional development of our teachers, technology in the classroom, and our facilities. Donations from these groups contribute to our lower cost per pupil rates, and we are very grateful. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I think that this is an excellent question on vision. Do you have to buy number 
in the district. Um, you said the fifth graders are losing a teacher. The class size was going up, but some were going into the resource room, into the resource program, which was going to offset. Are there, is there a new teacher into the resource room, or are you pushing how many students are going to be in each resource class? The resource class uh, numbers won't change. I, I think the concept there is to understand although there might be 26 kids in a homeroom when we they have instruction in uh, English and math some of those students who currently go to the resource room will be um, won't be in those homerooms during that time period so during English class although your homeroom might have 26 some of those kids will be leaving so that not 26 students will be taught at that time but are, are more students going to the resource room because of that, or we? No, And we no, look like no. we were losing a no. power pro, some class powers, si too. Class size does not determine qualification for resource room. That's an individual IEP um, decision. Okay, and it looked like we were losing some power professionals, too. Correct. Um, when we have some numbers changing, or the number of sections changing, like uh, the first grade at at Forest, we, we don't have as great as great of need to have um, paraprofessionals in there because you're taking out a classroom, so there's one less classroom to service. Um, at the high school, we're looking at some um, situations where uh, just a way of efficiently scheduling them, we're not going to need as many paraprofessionals. As far as really? students who really, Dirk, are you going to make a correction about that again next week, like you made the first correction? You don't need as many me, power professionals me. in the high school next year? Mr. Teron, one question at a time, please. Okay. Ms. Thank you. And other questions or comments? Sure. I'll reapproach the Yes. Yes, Charles Preslin, um, 36 Summer. You had just referenced a cap or something that expires in three. What exactly is that? Okay, so, so bank cap. Um, so we have this law about you're only allowed to increase taxes by 2%. Correct. Unless you go to vote. But they give you exceptions. The exceptions are, there's three exceptions. If you have a large increase in your health benefit costs in one year, that's more than 2%, you're allowed to take that additional money and use it as permission to raise the tax levy by that much more to cover that cost. If you don't use it in that year, it becomes banked cap for three years so that you could use it the following year or the following year or the following year. The only other adjustment is for an enrollment adjustment. If the state is predicting from their formula that you're going to have a large increase in enrollment, they will give you um, a certain amount of uh, exception in a dollar format, the same way as health benefits, that becomes bank cap if you don't use it the same way for three years. It's a complicated formula, and it doesn't usually match up with what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's like seven years times some crazy formula that they do. But sometimes you get it in the budget software, sometimes you don't. We did not get it this year. Um, it's sort of like a surprise if you do. And when is it expired? Is it expired because? You just have three years. And you to have to be recertified again, or you? Um, they just give you three years to use the extra permission to raise taxes. I, I guess they figure if you don't need to, to raise taxes in those three years that you're doing okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Other questions? Mr. Trump. I, I'm sorry. I want to come back to losing power professionals and because just from my personal experience, 
I feel that we're understaffed in a lot of areas. And from previous discussions, we're, we're talking about programs to keep our added district placement lower. And if we keep more students in the district that need resources and we're losing professionals to help those students, I don't understand how we're going to help keep students in if we don't have the staffing to help that. Like the program, the programs are to try and keep the out of placement because the out of school district is very expensive. It was a million dollars and it was for eight students and I understand that. So we put in some place, some programs to keep more students in, but we're firing teachers and professionals. It makes no sense to me. Okay. Mr. Phillips? As I was saying earlier, you're, you're talking about special education situations. One, one of the situations we have at Forest is not special education. It's a regular ed classroom. So we're eliminating that section, which um, puts a, less of a burden on our aid. So we don't, so there's an aid elimination there. When we start looking at schedules, we can work it efficiently so that we don't need as many aids, aids at the high school. But this is a discussion I've had with high school administration and and they're very confident that that's capable of doing so. The high school scheduling process is a, a, a complicated, puzzle-like situation when you're dealing with a lot of numbers and a lot of demands in classes, a lot of demands with IEPs. Um, our special education department is the largest at the high school than any other department. And on top of that, we have a, a, a more than a sufficient amount of aides at the high school currently serving our students. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that we're, we're scheduling appropriately. Okay. Are there uh, budget questions? Any questions on agenda items not related to budget? All right. Uh, you have some. Um, you, it is not the first meeting of the month, so we do not have committee liaison reports unless there is something that is time sensitive. Does anybody have a time sensitive item? All right. You have some minutes in your packet, executive session, and regular minutes from 4 8, 19. Uh, has everyone had a chance to look them over, and does anyone have any changes? Michael, would you move for this? Sure, I'll move for that. I have a second. Second. Second from David. All right, if there is no discussion, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyd Bucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Mr. Yaros Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. All right, we have some administrative items. Uh, Mr. Phillips had a comment first. Uh, a6 is a revised calendar for the school year. We did not use one emergency day, snow day, so that's a, we consider that a give back day, and that's going to happen the Friday before Memorial Day. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Campbell, would you move the administrative items? I move A1 through A6. All right, may I have a second? Second. Second from Anthony. Any questions on any of these administrative items that were not discussed in executive session? Questions? All right, if that is the case, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyle Bellucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaros Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. All right, personnel items. Tracy, would you move personnel items? Yes, I move P1 through P11, um, items P10 and 11 on the agenda. All right, may I have a second? Second. In keeping with our rules, personnel items are discussed in executive session. Uh, board members, if there's no objection, we'll go ahead with the roll call. Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyle Bellucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaz Raymond? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Michael, curriculum items. Oh, there's a C1 and a C2. All right. May I have a second? Second. Second from Heather. 
any discussion, board members, on these uh, field trips? Before we move business items, I want to draw your attention to item B8 on your agenda, which is a gift from the GREA, that is our teacher's union, of $1,300 for a bench in memory of Cecilia Lynch, a high school history teacher, much loved in this community and much missed. So thank you to IC GREA uh, people here. Thank you so much. All right, um, Paul, would you move the financial reports? I'd like to move items B1 to B13. May I have a second? Second. Okay, uh, any discussion, board members, further discussion before we finalize the business items and the budget among them? All right, uh, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyle Luigi? Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Blue? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. And before we do the public comment period, I want to thank Barbara for the wonderful budget uh, prep that we all got, uh, the Finance Committee and the full board, and the budget presentations. So thank you, Barbara. This is your first budget with us, and uh, hopefully it will be the first of them. Now, uh, public comment on agenda or other items. Again, the rules are the same. Raise your hand, reassure us if you're Glenridge residency, and um, give us your public question or comment. Yes. Hey, I'm Diane Preston, Glenridge resident. Um, I had a question on the P1 appointments of Sharon Mahaffey Smith, um, which uh, has an asterisk of pending district and state approval. Um, is that, and it says that uh, she's a, um, LBTC, is, is, that, uh, is, is that the reason for pending district state approval, or is it just the hiring? Uh, it's a hiring have... process, a background check. Okay, so she has the LBTC yes, certification correct. already. Correct. The state requires me to do a 20-year background check. 20-year oh. yes. occupational check. And the resume. local requirement is a physical examination. Other questions on agenda or other items? I have one, but I'll let everybody yes, else Yes, Mr. Trump. Anybody else? So you made those uh, those changes on the HIV form, is what Mr. Phillips was talking about. And we're up to HIV 15. I was wondering before the next meeting, because it won't be until next year, if you've seen any trends that, or, because you, you alter those numbers from a zero to a four out of district placements, or, suspensions or whatever the tagline was. And we're now at 15 HIVs. So I was wondering if you've seen stuff and you're working on different problems that you're seeing, or are you going to wait until next year to work on this year's problems? Those four were not related to HIV. That's why they're in our separate category. Correct. So okay. you have those four that were left off the last presentation that were put back on because we questioned it. And this week, you're now at 15 HIVs for the year in the high school. Right. And you said at the last meeting that you look at the HIVs and you look for trends, but you're not going to look at the latter part of the year until next year. So I'm asking, are you going to be proactive and look at the trends this year to try and address some of them before next year? We report out out of them at the end of the year. We do look at them throughout the school year. And if there's trends, we address them during the school year. Do you see current trends uh, in your 15? I, I don't see any current trends where there's the, majority, the, the majority of the items uh, tend to be one reason or another. Um, if they tend to be spread out a little bit more. Uh, we do have a tendency to see a lot of social media event um, incidents that occur. Um, and those are things that we've tried to address in, in, a, num in a number of ways. I give you the reserve the right to change the answer next week at the start of the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion.
by David. Second. Second by Michael. Thank you all.